carnivores. That's what they call these plants, and Australia is covered in them. Approximately 250 species call this continent home. That's more than any other region, and they're living right under your nose. Meet Boas Ing, aka Fierce Flora. Yeah, so what we have here is Drosera spatulata, the spoon leaved sundew. According to Boas, we're never more than a 30 minute drive away from a carnivorous plant. Yeah, so people always think that carnivorous plants are really rare and hard to find, but they're actually really common. And they can be found in the most unsuspecting of places. So I found more of these uh, spoon leaf sundews just growing by the side of the trail. These sundews really like damp sand, so you find them in heathlands and seepages and maybe next to creeks. Even when you do spot them, it's impossible to see the plants in action. That's where Boaz comes in. He's dedicated his life to capturing the beauty of Australia's carnivorous plants. Documenting these special plants hasn't been without its challenges. The pitcher plant I was looking for in Cape York was called Nepenthes rowaniae. It's actually the largest kind of plant in Australia with pitchers, you know, the size of a jug. To find out when I had to venture out into the floodplain and I was trying not to get eaten by crocs. But today we're travelling to Karingai Chase National Park, located just 30 kilometres north of Sydney, to see just how many of these meat eaters we can spot. There's actually a few types of species that grow here. So mainly we have the sundews and the bladderworts. Uh, sundews are the ones with the sticky leaves and bladderworts have underground traps which capture insects by sucking them into a bladder-like structure. Yeah, so this is uh, Drosera pygmaea, the pygmy sundew. So it's a tiny species of sundew that grows in the most skeletal soils. So you can see here it's just growing in the middle of a fire trail and a patch of sand on top of rock. It's hard to believe that an unassuming plant like this is capable of catching and consuming live prey. The process is just as gruesome as you might imagine. We can see a mosquito that's been caught by the backside and the retentive glands have bent around and enfolded the prey and also positioned the prey in the best area, that is right in the centre of the leaf where the digestion glands are. And if we just move to the front, we can see the final process where the whole mosquito is tucked in securely into the digestion gland zone and he's now being consumed. Now if I just touch a leaf, you can see these sticky strands of mucus that the plant uses to capture insects. So I found some bladderworts. Uh, this is Utricularia eulogenosa. So bladderworts have traps that are specialised to capture aquatic insects. See the tiny bladder that the plant uses to suck up aquatic microorganisms? Uh, so what we have here is Drosera spatulata, the spoon leaf sundew. Uh, it's probably one of the most common sundews in the Sydney region and it's identified by its spoon-shaped leaves. Boaz has a particularly good eye for spotting these sundews. It's more about uh, recognising the specific kind of silt they grow on and then really getting down on your knees and just scanning the ground looking for these tiny flowers that most people will just walk past without even noticing. Uh, so I found another species of sundew, uh, just this Drosera binata or the forked sundew. And it's called that because its leaf uh, splits into different forks. Uh, this is one of my favourite species of sundew because there's so many shapes and varieties across its range. So down in Tasmania, they're actually quite small and you only get one fork. But in northern New South Wales, I found plants with 88 forks. And those were the size of dinner plates. And because there's just so many different shapes and varieties, um, it's always exciting to see what the local form looks like. Boaz 
Western Australia is said to be home to some of the most spectacular species of carnivorous plant, including the famous Albany pitcher plant. If we cut the pitcher in half, we can see the various zones. Oops. Inside here are all the remains of various insects in this pool of fluid. But you can see the ladder where the insect can actually walk up. These inward pointing teeth, he rolls over the edge. This zone here is waxy, so he skids down into the precipice, into the fluid where he drowns. While Western Australia is a hot spot for carnivorous plants, incredible species can be found all over Australia. Um, because there's so many nutrient poor environments and such a wide variety of suitable habitats, um, we get a lot of diversity in carnivorous plants. So there's the carnivorous plants that grow in heathlands, for example, the sundews and bladderworts. We get the tropical pitcher plants. Across Western Australia, there's the Albany pitcher plant, uh, which inhabits the swamplands of southwestern Western Australia. Uh, not, not a lot of people realise that Australia has the most carnivorous plants out of anywhere in the world. Looking for carnivorous plants is more than a hobby for Boaz. It allows him to shut out the rest of the world for a small moment. When I'm hiking, I'm always searching for different types of plants in the wild. So I'm always on the lookout for this type of habitat that carnivorous plants might grow in. So maybe an exposed sea pig, for example, or a moss bed. I think um, I really get into the zone when I'm looking for carnivorous plants. So I'm, I'm quite focused when I'm, when I'm hiking. Yeah, I'm more focused on the plants than the actual walk sometimes. Each day, right under our noses, the important work of a carnivorous plant is underway, and we hardly even notice.